suffering people. Environment plays a very big role in shaping our personalities. The place of birth, the nature and the landscape in which a person grows up are not indifferent to the formation of his personality. We think, and rightly so, that we are the result of this or that place, this or that family in which providence has brought us into the world. Thus, Como and Lombardi must never be forgotten if you want to penetrate the personality of Guiseppe Ambrosoli. Don Carlo Vaga, parish priest of Ronago for 35 years, baptized little Guiseppe. A zealous priest, as we all know, all the holy parish priests of the period, dedicated only to the good of the people. Don Carlo was always found in the church where it was right for a priest to be found. He was an excellent spiritual counselor, worried about the sacramental life of his people, always ready to offer the right word, worried about the education of children and young people and caring for the sick. The example of this parish priest will accompany Guiseppe throughout his missionary life. At one time, Mother Mary was asked by the mother of Guiseppe Ambrosoli not to take him, rather she will give him when the time was right. In our own words, I will give him to you with joy. In the 1920s, it was easy to get sick. Infant mortality was high, and even little Guiseppe, he was only a year and a half old, was affected by a serious intestinal disease. The situation became so serious that from Mother Palmyra spont spontaneously escaped a prayer. Holy Madonna, don't take my baby. Leave him to me out of pity. And I will promise that when he's older, if you want him, I'll give him to you with joy. Guiseppe was healed, thanks to the intercession of the patroness of the missionaries, Teresa of the Child Jesus. And he was restored to health, as is normal in large families, the little one, the last son for about 10 years before Alexander's arrival. Military service back then in the early 19th century was compulsory. Meanwhile, Italy in the center north was immersed in the Nazi occupation and resistance. At the military visit, Giuseppe was declared fit for military service but, but was left on temporary and limited leave. Having two brothers in the army, he was exempted from military service. He then enrolled in medicine at the State University of Milan. He had to travel between Milan and Ronago. The events precipitated. Mussolini was deposed on the 25th of July, 1943. And the armistice with the Anglo-Americans was signed three weeks later. That's on the 8th of September, 1943. Como was occupied by the Nazis, but the Swiss border was closed, and thousands of people found refuge in Chiasso. Guiseppe, following the example of the bishop, also helped accompanying Jews and others persecuted by fascism across the border, a few hundred meters from his home. Then Guiseppe was also enlisted in the army of Salo and sent to the military hospital of Baggio in Milan. A month later, on the 26th of April, he left for Germany for Hubergstetten training camp in Wittenberg near Stuttgart. Life in the camp was hard. His military life was not useless. It served to strengthen his character, should it ever be unnecessary. Above all, he now knew from experience that dying for the country meant nothing to a Catholic and that if the dead soldiers had been able to choose, they would all, without exception, have chosen life. 
Many years later in Kalongo, he would welcome hundreds of wounded soldiers. He would smile at his fascist past, almost apologizing for it, and repeat that his shots only hit harmless targets, never people. With the war still going on in the life of Father Giuseppe and the world at large, a Seneca. With the end of the war, Giuseppe began a fundamental period for his missionary choice. The meeting that marked Giuseppe's spiritual life was with Father Silvio River, the diocesan assistant of Catholic Action of Como, who gathered the best young people in a group that he baptized Seneca. It is an association in which young people find themselves in an atmosphere of high spirituality as well as friendship and brotherhood to pray and to better live the yearnings of the hearts of Christ expressed on the eve of his passion in the speech of the Last Supper with his twelve friends, the apostles. His spiritual growth is translated into the search for holiness understood as identification with Christ. In this way, day after day, he matured his vocation to the mission that he had already allowed his fellow campers in Hoburg to perceive. When the war was over, Guiseppe resumed his university studies. He graduated in medicine and surgery at the University of Milan on the 18th of July, 1949, with a score of 108 out of 110. Immediately afterwards, he attended the medical department of Como Hospital as a volunteer trainee. Dr. Luciano Teruzzi, an assistant in this hospital, recounts, In assisting the sick and in carrying out the various tasks, he was most solicitous, always attentive without being noticed, to compensate for the omissions of others with the attitude of apologizing thanking those who had allowed him to practice in various diagnostic and therapeutic tasks. We'll continue from there next time.